What's up, Star Shines? I'm Sylvia Manbeam. Today we're taking a look at Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise Astro Train. Astro Train was one of the original triple changers from the original Gen 1 series, able to transform into a train and a space shuttle. There was a figure of Astro Train fairly recently released for the Titans Return series, but I was not able to get my hands on that, nor its repaint Sentinel Prime. So I thought I'd get this one and see what all the hubbub is about. Similar to Galaxy Upgrade Optimus Prime, Ultra Magnus, the Shockwave, as well as the War for Cybertron Optimus Prime figure, and presumably any future leader class figures in the War for Cybertron line, this trio of figures has opted to not have leader class figures be, sig be significantly larger, usually by a head or two, than Voyager class figures. Instead, leader class figures in this subline give us a Voyager-sized figure, but with extra armor, extra weapons, and accessories to justify the price difference. Now, if you're a fairly casual collector, paying 50 bucks for a Voyager-sized figure with some extra weapons and stuff may not be worth it to you. And honestly, it wasn't as worth it to me right away. It wasn't until after I saw other reviews for myself that I changed my mind. That being said, we have a lot of figures in the Transformers stable, both from recent waves and from recent years that we can compare Astro Chain to. So let's get them open and check out what's inside. Here's Astro Train right out of the box. He's got a nice, chunky, solid feel to him. Um, that's especially kind of helped by the fact that these ho the hollow gaps where his legs would go have like spaceship parts and you know as a triple changer he has more parts that so he doesn't have those hollow spaces or if he does those hollow spaces are actually hidden pretty well. The paint looks lovely. I, I love how there's the three jets on his back just like classic G1 Astro Train. We've seen something similar on the Seeker mold for uh, Generations uh, War for Cybertron Siege. We've got these nice clunky boots, nice wide feet, long feet that give him a good bit of stability, though the ankle tilt on mine is really, really tight, making it difficult to get some good poses. In addition, the waist swivel in my figure is is normal, but the hip swivel just underneath these waist skirts are really tight, making it difficult for me to get my particular figure into a natural looking pose between the hips and the ankles, requiring a lot of effort to m move into shape. However, Astro Chain as evidenced by the leader class price point, does not come alone. Astrotrain also comes with a tender for the train to attach to. And unlike, for example, an Optimus or Ultra Magnus trailer that connect via like a trailer hitch or something, the Astrotrain tender connects some familiar looking, a familiar looking triad of pegs. It connects to those jets for pulling it. And again, we've got that gray, we have black, and that lovely deep, uh, almost, well, spacious purple. We've got some really nice molding detail. You can see that there are places where what would normally be like rivets could also double as tracks depending on how it's set up. And of course there's multiple weapon ports all over for you to attach the various weapons to. 
Master Train comes with a surprising number of weapons. Two of these rifles that are shown being primarily used in the space station mode. A large Gatling gun with a scope. Let me see if I can get the detail in the barrel there. There we go. You can see the little Gatling barrels. Kind of a large flamethrower, assault rifle, cannon type weapon. Very cool. And a rocket pod, which can either be attached vertically or horizontally. Not only that, but like I mentioned before, the new leader class scale scales with Voyager figures, but this tender isn't anything to sneeze at either. I mean, look, standing it up, this tender is about the same size as a Legends class figure. This thing is huge, but it is in scale with Astro Train, and I kind of love this, even if it's a little daft. But can you imagine that? In a way, you're getting two figures in one. It's just this figure is an accessory, kind of similar to like Roller for Optimus. Thanks, Sea Spray. For comparison, here is Astro Train compared to The Last Night Megatron in his Voyager class figure, Siege Optimus, Siege Thundercracker, Earthrise Grapple, Fellow Triple Changer, Earthrise Springer, and another fellow Triple Changer, Titan's Return Blitzwing. As you can see, the Triple Changers were a little bit bigger in Titan's Return, but Honestly, the amount of kind of flimsy weirdness with Blitzwing more than makes up for the fact that Astrotrain is a solid figure, albeit about half a head smaller. Similar to the aforementioned Shockwave figure, the instructions show that you can actually disassemble Astrotrain's uh, tender to give him some extra little platform heels. Again, due to the tight ankles, mine has trouble standing properly as well as combine all five weapons into this massive overkill weapon that honestly, I think even the live action movie version of Hound would be a little ashamed of. Also, whatever is left over, you literally just attach to the back. And my figure is slumping so much because the waist swivels, look at that. It's so heavy, he can't stand up properly. I think the concept of taking like your trailer and all this extra accessories and attaching them onto the figure as extra armor is really cool. And having weapons that combine like this War for Cybertron series has been doing does work with other figures. But with Astro Train, it doesn't work as well, especially when you compare it to other Decepticon, uh, Dr. Shocktopus, I like to call. <laughs> This version, this version of Shockwave does the whole extra accessories combining into a super mode so much better. I just wish Astro Chains was done, well, a little bit better. My best guess, if I was going to try to do it myself, is the biggest problem is the backpack. I personally would maybe try to turn the backpack around and maybe try to add in like an extra swivel or something so that it could be used as say, I don't know, solar panels or if, if, if there was an extra joint here that allowed this to fold down, you could have it be like a wing extension or maybe even these pieces could just detach. Um, as is, there are swivels here that allow it to flip back, so I guess technically you could have it be like, I don't know, something like this. The problem is, is the figure itself is massive, and so it's difficult to figure out how to get all these accessories to work properly. Um, I guess you could do something like that and have like this kind of armored hood kind of pauldron kind of thing. Uh, 
having been playing a lot of Fallout recently, this kind of reminds me a little bit of the giant kind of backpack shoulder section that the X01 armor has. One last little bit I want to cover is that the instructions also show that you can store all five guns, three in the center, and then one on each wing for the combined uh, carrier. And while it does look maybe a little janky, it does fold up into its caboose mode, though I think I may have done one of these wrong. It's not folding up perfectly for me, but you can see it does close up with all five weapons inside. So at least it has weapon storage. That's kind of cool. Astro Train has an absolutely gorgeous shuttle mode. There is no visible robot kibble, save for like, like part of the biceps, which I mean, there's no, ah, there's no robot kibble. It's freaking great. You may notice that there is these streaks, the same kind of paint streaks that we've seen previously on um, War for Cybertron figures. Trust me though, the actual paint itself is far less noticeable than it appears on camera. The silver and the dark gray blend in so well that honestly I didn't notice that it was painted with the silver until after I had already started filming on my camera here. It's a beautiful, beautiful figure, a uh, space shuttle figure. For comparison, here's Astro Train next to Thundercracker, Helicopter Mode Springer, The Last Night Voyager Megatron, Titan's Return Jet Mode Blitzwing, Siege Optimus, and Siege Grapple. The instructions show slapping all the guns on and unfolding the uh, trailer to turn it into this kind of, uh, I don't know, shuttle delivery vehicle. Personally, I don't see this as a very viable mode. Uh, it's difficult to get it to stay on like the sled and it doesn't really roll that well due to the weight. Uh, plus, honestly, having all of these guns on Astro Train's uh, shuttle mode seems really ridiculous. You know, having a couple weapons on, like with like Springer, that's reasonable. This many weapons on a single vehicle with this weird transportation mode? No, that, that doesn't work for me. Alternatively, you can plug in that carrier to the jet engines of Astro Train to convert it into a launch pad mode. And in fact, they even show that smaller figures can go up the ramps, etc. Personally, I find this combination to be better. And in fact, this is the combination shown on the box art. However, having all these weapons still seems a little ridiculous to me. It's just it's overkill, and no one really needs five guns on one robot. I'll say it again. Why over-weaponize this train so much? All of these guns just look silly. I will say the one missile launcher up here on the, like, the tinderbox section blends in fairly well enough that you almost kind of don't notice it but the four guns making fingers grabbing the butt end of the train looks ridiculous. Now that we have all those guns stored away in our little coal tank, this is a really nice train mode. You don't even need this. This is a nice train mode. True. There is visible head syndrome, but honestly, this looks good. The, the molding is fabulous, so I really wish they had picked this out in a little bit of silver or at least some light gray, but you can see the train wheels and these are all rolling wheels. I wish the smokestack was a little bit higher, but honestly, 
there are not a lot of trains transformers and Astro Train knocks it out of the park. He looks fabulous. And the fact that this guy's got a coal car that attaches is pretty awesome too. But once again, here is Sea Spray next to the coal car. Yeah, this thing is bigger than a Legends class and even a couple of my smaller deluxe classes like Bumblebee from Cybertron Adventures are actually smaller than this thing. This is huge and it's an accessory. <laughs> For our last round of comparisons, here is Train Astro Train, once again compared to Thundercracker, the jet form of Blitzwing, Helicopter Springer, Siege Prime, Grapple, Last Night Voyager, Megatron. Thanks for joining me for this review of War for Cybertron Earthrise Astro Train. Um, this is a good figure, but I'm not really sure if it's worth the leader price point. The robot mode is phenomenal. The spaceship mode is great. The train mode's pretty good, but basically what you're getting is a Voyager triple changer, just like Springer or Blitzwing or any of the other triple changers from previous series, but at a leader price point. Personally, I do not think that the train cart with all of its included weaponry is worth it. Collectors will likely just have him in robot mode and not include this at all. And honestly, how many kids are going to want a train nowadays? Space shuttles, maybe yes, but I don't see this being really popular with a lot of kids. I see it mostly being popular with collectors especially ones who grew up with the original Gen 1 series who are familiar with Astro Train. That being said, it is a good figure. I just don't know if all of this is worth the extra money. Until next time, I've been Sylvia Moonbeam. If you liked this video, please give me a lunar laser like below and consider giving me a star shine subscribe and hitting that moonbeam bell if you want to see more content like this. I've been Sylvia Moonbeam and I'll see you next time, Starshines.